Hello everyone, it is the start of week 32 in my fourth grade classroom. Hi, if you're new to my channel, my name is Maria Lee Sanchez and I'm a fourth grade teacher in South Florida. And that's right, we're in week 32. I think out of 39 or 40 weeks of school year, I'm leaning to maybe 39, I can't believe that. We're in the middle of April, today's April 17th, 2023, and I just finished wrapping up my day, kind of, sort of. I did have a full day with the students, and then I jumped into a training that I did with the teachers, which is part two of my teacher wellness PD on an ebook from our ASCD website. And right now, I'm in an online PD. So I'm going to make this quick because we just braked for our lunch break, which is 30 minutes, so I can drive home and finish the PD at home while it's still light outside. So just to let you know, this morning I started with block one, and we ended up doing a reread of the anchor text, Rediscovering Our Spanish Beginnings. Students completed two graphic organizers on the text features and what they can learn from them. One of them was on the illustrations and the caption, and the other one was on the sidebars, and then students wrote a re respond to reading question, I should say, on why it was important to read that and what we can learn about Florida history. So we did something similar with my afternoon group where they reread the shared read and completed their graphic organizer on chronology and then answered a similar question about what they can learn by reading about the founding of Jamestown. Both classes ended up doing our writing activity, which I couldn't do last week, but I finally found time to do it this week, where we reread the prompt for this week on the effects while animals and humans have in each other when they live in the same area. So we unwrapped the prompt again, and then we started reading and annotating source one. That was a mouthful, but that's pretty much what we did today. I had a great day with the students, and we did reveal a mystery student for the morning, but the mystery student for the afternoon group wasn't revealed. If you don't know what that is, it's a strategy that I've been trying to implement since last week. Basically, I randomly choose a student that I observe throughout the class without letting everyone know who it is. I choose a student at the start of class, write their name in an index card, and put the index card in an envelope that says mystery student, and I pop it up on the board. It looks like this. And then if that student happened to make great choices and did what they were supposed to do, they get to be revealed in front of the class, and they spin the wheel of prizes and rewards. This has worked on the most part, and I just have to keep reminding students of the expectations. So hopefully tomorrow we will have a student revealed for my block two, since I start with them tomorrow. And let's see how it continues to go for the rest of this week. Well, I'm going to wrap up, grab my things, and then I'll show you more as the week progresses on my PD with the teachers. It has been really enlightening, and we have learned a lot of different things on teacher wellness and how we can take care of our energy, time, and passion. So I can't wait to share a little bit here and there, snippets of what that adventure has been like. So I'll see you tomorrow. Hello everyone, it is the end of the day on Tuesday. and I'm so exhausted. It is past my time to be here. It's almost eight o'clock, 7.44. I did have my PD this evening with the teachers. It was the last day for the educator bandwidth training on wellness. I'll give you a little preview of one of the things that I gave the teachers today. But today with the students, we were working on reading or rereading the anchor text, rediscovering our Spanish beginnings and having students work on the annotated reading sheet, which I'll show you right now. And my reading, we, sorry, I meant my writing. We were working on finishing reading source one and annotating it. So I'm a little bit behind on writing because by now we were supposed to have finished already reading and annotating all three sources. So tomorrow we're gonna work on making sure that we finish reading and annotating the last two sources and getting started in the sorting of the evidence. Whew, that was a mouthful. So let me now show you what that annotated reading sheet looks like. It is similar to sheets that I have used at the beginning of the year, having used it in a while, but these squares at the ends, end corners of the sheet are for sticky notes. This one, they happen to need it to do a chronology organizer. For my first class, I didn't come up with the idea of printing the organizer on the post-it, but for my second class, I did. And how I did that was on PowerPoint, I created a template of three by three squares and I printed the template and then on another slide, I created nine of these, sorry, I mean six of these that will go on that without the frame. And I would put the stickies here 
feed it through the printer, and then it will print on the sticky notes. So that was great. The other three boxes, they just needed line stickies to answer since it was written in sentences. And that's what the students in one class pretty much finished. They were working with pairs and groups, but the other class still needs to finish working on this. Now, one of the things that I gave to teachers this afternoon during our PD is this self-care bingo that I created myself. And it came out so nice. And here I have bingo standing for body, inner self, nature, gratitude, and others. So the activities that are underneath each letter correlate with that type of self-care. And obviously the middle space is a free space. So I really love making this and coming up with it. So really, really liked it. I just finished emailing all the participants a copy of the PDF for the presentation, as well as digital copies of this self-care bingo and the creative license that I gave them yesterday so that they can display it and give themselves the creative license to be creative, and as well as the Zentangle activity that I had them do yesterday and links to a couple of other resources that we talked about. So my friends, that is all I have to share for Tuesday. I am exhausted. <sighs> I am thankful that I don't have to stay too late the rest of the days this week. So I will see you tomorrow. Hello everyone, it's the end of the day Wednesday. Just wrapped up with my students and I'm about to go to a testing meeting since we're getting ready to do the final state test of the year in May which is just in a few short weeks. So just wanted to give you an update today. This morning, my class was reading the pair text, the block one was reading the pair text for unit five, week five. And then I gave them a Venn diagram so they can compare the pair text to the anchor text, as well as six comprehension questions that went over text structure, central idea, relevant details, summarizing and author's perspective, as well as I believe one of them was on details and vocabulary. So they were working on that and I worked with a small group while the rest of the class was working independently. And in the afternoon, I had my afternoon class, we were updating the rewards with the reward wheel. And then we started watching a video on the Fountain of Youth since we were talking about Juan Ponce de Leon. So did a little bit of that. They went to PE and uh, to be honest with you, this afternoon was rough. I felt like I was riding the struggle bus and we ended the day with a nice mindful moment activity or wellness activity on drawing little doodles inside circles. So this is the sheet that I used with my other class at some point this year. So I was doing it along with the students while we had some relaxing music. And this was the reading response questions that we were working with that particular story. And this is the Venn diagram on the back to compare both passages. The good thing is that I put into my lesson plans that tomorrow will be like a catch up day so students can finish any assignments they haven't finished. So whatever we didn't get to today, we will finish tomorrow. And then on Friday, the students will take that assessment. So I'll see you tomorrow. Hello everyone, coming to you at the end of the day on Thursday, finish with my Minecraft club today. We actually ended up having a little party. I bought some pizza for them and mini cupcakes and some Capri Sun and we spent some time having all those refreshments before playing our last game together and it was a lot of fun. I just finished creating certificates for them which I'll pass out to their teachers tomorrow so they can receive them. And yeah, that's the end of Minecraft Club from this year. And it was the first time our school had it. And we had a lot of fun. And the students are looking forward to participating again next school year. Now, with my students today, we were just wrapping up, having like a catch-up day, making sure we finish assignments from this week before they take their assessment tomorrow. That is all that I have to share for today. I am very, very tired. So I'll see you tomorrow. But before I go, I forgot, I wanted to show you my Minecraft shirt for today. And here it is, it is a Minecraft bee and it says craft without limits. Got it from the Microsoft store. If I remember, I will link it down below, but really, really cute. All right, so now I will definitely see you tomorrow. Hello everyone, we have made it to the end of the day on Friday and it's been quite a day. I feel so exhausted. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, there's been a couple days this week that I just feel like extreme exhaustion and the students have been extra rambunctious and I'm not the only one because as I spoke to the teachers on this missile today, everybody has been feeling it with their classes. Maybe it's just the time of year. Maybe it's the fact that they're soon going to take the last state testing, which for my students will be in about a week. 
but we have made it to Friday, the end of the day. The students are all dismissed. And this morning I started with my block one and they were basically working on their reading assessment for this last unit that we were working on. And with my block two, we finished one more question in our reading annotated sheet. And then we read the pair selection and we compared it to the anchor text. And I showed them a video on archeology. span I do have a lot of ELL students, level ones and two. So I just wanted to make sure I show them a discovery video on that so that they understood the premise for which the passages were about. And then the students started taking their wonders assessment as well with the ELL level ones and two students taking the scaffolded assessment. So I just finished planning for next week and I wanted to show you a little thing that the girls in one or two of the classes did for us this week. They basically made paper boats and in the paper boats they folded little kind sayings for myself and my co-teacher. So my co-teacher got some of her own kindness boats herself and then I got mine that I wanted to show you. So here are the little paper boats and inside of each of these boats were all these papers and I just went ahead and just opened them up so you can kind of see what were the messages that the students wrote. These are just super beautiful and I make sure I took lots of pictures because I want to remember all of these beautiful sayings whenever I need a little pick-me-up or to remind myself or of my why as to why I love what I do, I love what I teach, I love building relationships and connecting with students and making learning fun, I can just remind myself of these beautiful messages that these students went ahead and did for me. Some of the other students from my other class also wrote me some notes this week. So this is from one of my ELL students. She's an ELL level one and she wrote this message in English. So proud of her. One of my other students wrote a little message because one of my outdoor cats actually passed away just two days ago and they were actually struck by a car so it was very difficult and it was so sweet that she took the time to write this message when she saw that I was not feeling great I was pretty sad about it and this is one of my other ELL level one students that wrote this message for me so super super nice of them so those are the kind of things that I love to get from my students to just confirm that what I am doing is reaching them and our relationships have been growing all throughout the year and it's just nice reminders and it's so sweet of them to take some time to write those messages to me so thank you thank you so much to my dear students and let me just show you really quickly on my google keep what I have planned for next week so since next week is our last week for doing any test prep or review for crunch time I went ahead and just focused on that. So here are my lesson plans digitally. And if I click on it, it opens up and I can kind of zoom in. But I also have them here next to my desk ready to go. And once I click out of this, I can pretty much show you what I have planned for each day. There's a lot of review. And Thursday is take your child to work day. So I'm pretty sure a lot of students will take an opportunity to participate in that. So those are my lesson plans for next week. And that is where I would like to end week 32. So I do have an event here in school tomorrow. Marsha Tate, who is the author of Worksheets Don't Grow Dendrites, she's going to come to our school and we're going to spend a day with her. So I have to be here bright and early tomorrow. They start at 8, so I want to make sure I leave my house by 7. So I do have to wake up early again tomorrow. But I, if I do decide to vlog that event, I will be in a separate video. So I hope you enjoyed coming along with me for this week of learning. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment down below, let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day and don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.